I'm working on the center belly pan. So what's that? This, <laughs> this section. So it'll be Zeus on, so I'm setting the Zeus's and Mark's doing the back uh, scallop strips. So everything, all the, scal all the carbon will be on the underside of the car. Um, For all the airflow. Yeah, aerodynamics and such. Okay, are you guys doing all carbon or? Yeah, everything we're doing right now. So like, I gotta think about this because it's upside down, but driver's over there. So it has the 090 plate uh, for the 25-1 spec. And then it has uh, titanium under the driver for the rest of it. And then the passenger side is all carbon and then this will be carbon. But it's Zeus on rather, these are all bolted on or if you really want to, you can do rivets, but this is Zeus on that way when you have to pull the drive shaft out to pull you know, the trans or the third member, it's all easy to go and ready to come out. So mm -hmm. laying it out before we cut the transmission cross member, because this will have four bolt flanges on each side. So trying to figure out the best way to lay that out. Um, the four bolt flanges stick lower. So this, the, the four bolt flanges and the four link brackets are the lowest part of this car. So, when you're setting carbon here, you're gonna have, we're trying to figure out a better way to lay it out where it wasn't just notched to the four bolt flange, make it a little easier, but. And a little bit more sealed. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> if you trim it to the bolt and then you turn the bolt to a flat, mm -hmm. there's a hole. <laughs> yeah. So it probably doesn't really matter, but being that this is a drag and drive car, it, um, might see water. Most likely Most we'll likely. see water on the road. Yeah. Uh, why, why titanium on one side versus the other? Under the driver has to be like O24 steel. So, uh, which... Or titanium. Or titanium, yeah. So I think this is like O27. I believe so. It was a little thicker than normal, but as you can tell, it's already like paper. So we opt for just a little bit thicker just so it seals up a little better and isn't just floppy. Cause as soon as you tighten these down, if these scallop strips, when you weld them, they stay pretty flat, but like if you run your hand across them, you can feel them, you know, waving. So, um, that way it doesn't, you know, it's not just a really floppy piece of tin. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is for the spec of the chassis. This side doesn't matter. Yeah. So the passenger this side, side as light as possible, just to seal yeah. up the hole. Yeah. I did do carbon, right here because it has this 090 plate so it doesn't matter what you do on the very bottom so i went ahead and did carbon on this back piece yeah. just so it's as light as it can be and yeah it makes the whole underside of the car flat that's the only reason there's a panel here is just so the underside of the car stays completely flat again aerodynamics keeping everything smooth yeah. fast smooth and fast as fast as smooth mm-hmm the plate is actually part of that SFI spec also. 25.1, because it's a Pro Mod chassis cert, it has this plate. Um, I think it came about, there was a wreck, I think it was in St. Louis. And I think that's where it came from, was the car turned sideways in front of the other car and like speared it. Mm -hmm. So it, Cause, I think it almost went through the seat. Yeah, because like drag car stuff, you always have a tube front, so there's always two two or sometimes Spears. four tubes sticking off the front of the car and it's just a fiberglass nose. So that just yeah. obliterates as soon as you hit something. So that, uh, those <laughs> spears will just go through a lot of stuff. So I'll show you the, uh, what I was working on the shell yesterday. So, uh, hopefully end of the week, early next week, we'll have the chassis back on the table and ready to go on the chassis, the shell will be ready to go on the chassis. So I was just, we made these rocker plates. So we cut out all of the inner structure and just plated it. Um, that way it's, you know, it gives you a good spot to land your cage and mount the body. Um, there's no specification on a 25 one of the body. So it can just be a floating, you know, piece of tin basically as what the rest of the shell is, um, other than the mountain doors for the stock doors. But so this is just a piece of, tin we laid and then just capped off some of this to where it's you know flat and you don't lose your bits and parts down in the, in the, the crevasse. The crevasse. <laughs> the crevasse. 
<laughs> so, and this this is all, this will get seam sealed back here. Um, we learned on the shop car that if you don't seam seal that all up, you get little rocks and such, and then you go do a burnout and just dumps all the rocks on the ground in front of you. So the shop car actually has a piece of tin that's still duct taped in. Yeah, that was it's, the drag and drive fix. I yeah, think we were on drag week when we did that. Yeah. We stopped at a Rural King, yeah. bought a piece of like the thinnest tin that we could. <laughs> and I had brought like all my tools and stuff, so I had like tin snips and stuff. So we cut it all out and gorilla taped it up in front of the tire onto the quarter panel. And I think there's two bolts in it. I think we drilled two yeah. bolts and put two little quarter inch bolts <laughs> in there. And uh, it's been like that for about three years, <laughs> yeah. two or three years now. So. I grill it tape strong. Still home. Still home. <laughs> so yeah, on uh, on the cars that we build now, we do that, but nicer. Yeah. yeah. We do like yeah. a nice formed tin piece and uh, I'll braze it in and everything and then we'll seam seal around it. Yeah. So hopefully these will, this will, these will be one mm -hmm. soon. Very soon. Uh, it's just a lot easier to do stuff upside down. It's yeah. yeah. Floating in the air, not in here. What do you guys got to do left on the chassis before you put it in? I know it's about a week's work. Oh, uh, let's see. I got a I got a list over here, kind of what I want done. Back half scallop strip and carbon, that's definitely going to be done. The drive shaft enclosure uh, behind the titanium one is just an aluminum tube, essentially. Uh, tunnel cover, he just wants a carbon around the trans just to keep fluid from flying on you if you know something if a line pops or something trans cross member we do the belly pans which matt's working on now and then window net i just put on there because i remembered it <laughs> doesn't really have to be done before it goes in the car anything new that you guys are as far as the tin work goes um well we've kind of done the back a little bit differently than normal so the back, back here, I did a little different. Normally, there's scallop strips and we put carbon back here. But with all of the bracing that we wanted to do for his four link brackets, we just, or it was going to be a little bit too much and the shape of the number one bar and everything, being that it's bent. It was going to be a little too difficult to do scallop strips and bend a piece of carbon and stuff. So I just went ahead and filled everything into tin. Yeah, I guess it would be a point where adding too many scallop strips is detrimental also. Yeah. It's like even here, we this is the fire bottle mounts, which is going to be under the passenger seat. Well, we wanted that as low as possible, get the weight as low as possible. Well, it landed the carbon needing to be cut. So it was a decision of, do we just make this out of tin and just weld it in? Or do you make it out of scallop strips? Mm -hmm. So there's always a balance. If you get two small panels, then you run into that where it's right. you're kind of you end stuck. Up essentially... A whole bunch of scallop strips in a small area because, like, you got to figure there'd be scallop strips here, 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 <laughs> here, 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 here. Yeah, by the you time know, you do that, you by the time you get all that, all the nuts and bolts, all that, and the piece of carbon, the piece of tin weighs less than all of that. So, yeah, it's a you gotta, you gotta figure out that balance of where, if you're trying to be as light as possible and ease of building it, yeah, uh, where that will be better. You know, putting tin in, then just putting a whole bunch of scallop strips of carbon. What are you working on right now, Mark? Uh, the back half carbon. So actually, the back half scallop strips. So the whole center section is going to be carbon. So there'll be scallop strips, you know, on the bottom, just like on the floor. We'll make it to where the bottom of the panel is going to be flush with the bottom of the tube. And then uh, I'm not going to do this back panel yet because we still have shock mounts that need to go right here, so I'll have to trim everything around those. So I'm not going to do that yet until we get that on, but I'll do these two panels. Probably if I get these done relatively soon, uh, and Mark will be working on that. If it's upside down, I'm not, I don't really have much else to do, so I'll probably go over to Cody's car, and we're going to wrap that car. So oh, nice. I'll probably work on that. But other than that, there's really not a lot that's different than what we normally do on a 25-1. Um, it all just what the customer wants and what they you know what their goals are because you can all you can add tubes later like if you know if you notice it flexing and stuff but yep so we try and tailor it to each customer where we're not completely overbuilding it and it's you know takes 100 hours to add extra gussets when they probably don't need that for the next you know five to ten years 
So a little different is this back bent number one bar. Yeah, that's a little different. It's got a little bit of a shorter four link brackets or four link bar set up in it. Um, usually we go a little longer where it's short, you know, it bends this almost straight. Um, this is just back bent to get the four link bar length that he wanted. We're trying to keep everything the same, the same, basically same car and setup, just in a better chassis, lighter car. Um, Cause like the crank center line is, we only lowered it like a half inch. Um, the motor placement front to back is exactly where it is in his car. So that way it's not, you know, a huge restart, start over. Mm -hmm. Garrity it'll, has a decent baseline to go yeah, off of. It'll still be a, still be a whole new car, but hopefully they'll a little easier. Driver compartment's huge. <laughs> Giant. <laughs> like, I mean, he's sitting on, you know, Brett's, I mean, he's not short and he's still sitting on probably eight inches. Yeah, he wanted to be about eight inches off the floor to get him up to the right height. The windows are super, like, you can, I mean, you can kind of look over at that car and just see how narrow the windows are. But you got to be able to see if, you're, like, if it was just a drag car, you know, you can kind of figure you just feel it out it. and feel it. But if it's a drag and drive car, you kind of have to see. Yeah. The engine bay is pretty stubby in this. There's not a lot of room to shove all the stuff. So I, it's probably driver compartment, if I had to guess. It's wider too, a lot wider. Yeah. It's like four inches wider. More than that. After we cut the rockers and made the rockers straight, it's about six inches wider overall. Yeah, we did cut the rocker, that's right. The rockers come in probably, I don't know, two and a half, three inches. So yeah. when you cut those, you can move everything out, which gives the driver more room. Um, it takes more time to cut the rockers out because there's all kind of paneling and stuff behind there, but. It's not too bad. Yeah, I think we're down to. Uh, we cut 667 pounds out of the body. It's, yeah. I don't know with the rocker plates now, but you cut a little bit more out of the rockers, didn't you? Yeah. So the body probably weighs between 150 and 155 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, I think the chassis will probably come in like. 300 probably inch. by the time you get scallop strips and by the time all the scallop strips all the panels everything are on it yeah yeah plus we're doing a lot of titanium stuff on this yeah so <clears throat> that'll help a good amount just in that there's a good weight savings just in the four link bars being titanium so, and the wishbone there's probably the wishbone. 10 pounds yeah yeah those are heavy in chromoly mm, so you got titanium uh, wishbone Wishbone, four link bars. Four the right, yep, tunnels, titanium. Uh, yeah, titanium. That doesn't save a whole lot of weight, but it does save a little bit. Yeah, like it's. I don't really know where else you pound add titanium, unless you did like titanium back half. But being a drag and drive car, it's got to tow a trailer, so yeah, you can't make it like yeah, <laughs> you can't make it too flimsy. <laughs> you get to a point where the dollar per pound gets exponentially expensive. Yeah, yeah. Once you start buying titanium bolts, that's when yeah, you're, you've arrived. I think you're about four to six grand to do titanium bolts on a whole on a whole car. Probably, yeah. They're expensive. That might save you five two pounds. pounds. Yeah. Yeah, you might not even be five pounds. It might be less. Mm -hmm.